Hi, I'm Tim Land. We're from Tightlines Fly Fishing Company, and I'll be your host today on Midwest Sportsman. And today we're going to be talking about fly casting, probably the most essential, important component of fly fishing. And uh, as a shop owner, I see this an awful lot where people neglect this one component more than any of the other stuff. And I encourage all of you to take this underneath your belt and learn how to cast a fly well, because your success is going to completely depend on how well you present the fly. In a store situation, you can come into a shop and I can tell you what flies to use. I can say, use this or use this. You can go to the river. I can't be there with you to actually make those casts and physically present those to the fish. We're going to back up a little bit and take a look at what is fly casting. What is, you know, what's the difference between fly casting and casting with spinning tackle? The main difference between casting with a fly rod and casting with a spinning rod is in spin fishing or fishing with gear, you're fishing with a lure or something that's heavily weighted, something that's got some mass to it. You know, attached to this lure would be a, a you know, a thin string of monofilament. You would wind up with that thing and when you'd throw it, it has mass, it has weight, it'll project out to your target or to your fish. Now the opposite of that in fly fishing is, especially in trout fishing, we're going to be fishing essentially with weightless, weightless flies. Something that's made out of fur, something that's made out of feathers, something that has absolutely no weight to it. So how do we deliver something that's completely weightless that if I try to throw this, it's not going to go anywhere? we have to actually cast the line itself. So let's take a little look at a fly rod and, uh, and, and what, what its composition is or how we make that cast. This is fly line. This is what is the mass that we're going to actually cast through the air. So the true difference is we're casting the line. We're not necessarily casting the lure. We're casting the line. And that's the major difference between spin fishing and fly fishing. The other thing that's quite nice, you know, for practicing in, in, in this segment of fly casting is I'm going to be using a practice leader. It's kind of slick. This is a newer innovation, but it's made entirely out of a fluorescent orange. So it's a little easier for, for you, the viewer at home, to actually be able to see this. And at the end of that, I've just simply put a piece of yarn. And for practicing, we encourage you to use yarn and not a fly itself, you know, when, when you're learning, you, you definitely don't need to be picking flies out of your skin. The other thing that's very important, you know, in, in casting or practicing, or especially the fishing portion of it, is polarized glasses, because this thing's going to be winging past your head. With the yarn, not quite as important, but with a real fly, very, very important. So that's, that's the important element. The other thing is that I want all of you to do at home is, instead of necessarily picking up a fly rod and gaining your practice and gaining your skills out on the stream or out on the river, I'd encourage you to practice in an environment, in a setting, much like we're dealing with here. An open lawn, an open space. In a lot of situations, fish get in the way. You know, uh, you're concentrating so much on the obvious, how do I catch that fish, how do I catch that fish, that you're going to detract from, okay, that's just a bad cast. So that's what I want you to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get right into the basics of fly casting and teach you how to get to that level. Now let's get into some fly casting. The first thing that we have to do is the grip on, the, on, on holding the fly rod itself. And a lot of people, when I've taught classes, the first thing they do is they grab the cork like this and start just waving the thing around. You don't want to hold the cork like this. The most important thing is you almost give the, the, the cork handle a handshake, just like this, like you're extending your hand out and giving a handshake. The thumb, the most critical component here is the thumb sits on top of the cork like you see here. And the reason for that is this is much like the bead on a shotgun. If you were shooting a shotgun, wherever you point that bead is where, where your spray is going to go. And the same thing holds true in a fly cast. Wherever my thumb is pointed is where your fly is going to be delivered. The other thing that's very important is how much pressure do you hold onto that fly rod or do you hold onto that cork? And when we teach lessons in classes, I see students and I see clients from guide trips, you know, stretching their hand like this and, you know, just, just in a lot of pain and discomfort because they're physically trying to turn this cork into a diamond by crushing it. And the most important thing is just to keep a very relaxed, controlled grip on it. You don't want to squeeze this thing down. You want to just hold it comfortably. Now the stance 
itself. When you're making a false cast, if I'm casting straight out at where my rod tip is, is I want to have my left foot set just a little bit forward and my back foot back a little bit like this. And the reason for that is it gives me a stable ground. If both of my feet are completely straight like this, it'd be very easy to push me over and take me off of balance. But with my feet, one foot slightly in front of the other, one back like this, it allows me to have a lot more control and gives me a good proper stance when I'm making the cast. So now you have the, the, the grip, you've got the stance under control, you're ready to start the casting. Now, out of everything that I'm going to tell you about fly casting, this is the major thing. There is no wrist in fly casting. When you're learning, there's absolutely zero wrist in fly casting. And what will happen in a lot of situations is people will come in for a casting lesson with me or a private casting lesson, and the first thing that they'll do is they'll say, Tim, I'm having problems with casting. And I'll see them do this. You know, their wrist is all over the place and they're using all wrist. The problem with your wrist is your wrist has very, very little strength in it. The fly cast comes entirely through your forearm. Your forearm is your muscle. This is where your strength lies. And the fly cast is boiled into a very simple step. It's an acceleration to a stop and an acceleration to a stop. Very abrupt stops. An abrupt stop back and an abrupt stop forward. The other thing that's very important is how much power do I put into it. For those of you who have done some basic casting, what we've seen a lot of times is, you know, especially if they're walleye fishermen or musky fishermen, they'll come back very softly and just wallop it forward. Very softly and wallop it forward. The fly cast is equal amount of power on the back cast, equal amount of power on the front cast. No changes. Accelerate to a stop, equal power. Accelerate to a stop, equal power. That's the basics of fly casting. Now, the magic of this rod right here is that it's made out of a, you know, a high modulus graphite and the qualities of these fly rods is so superior that it's going to make people better casters and give them a lot of energy in it. But it also acts as an idiot stick. And I've seen this on a number of occasions. After I go through the basic cast where I tell everybody, do not use your wrist, accelerate to a stop, and I'll have you put your hand up like this and make those motions. As soon as this fly rod goes into the hand, apparently it sucks all of that information out of your other ear. Because then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, I know how to do it, you know, just like this. And you just have to remember that. Take those steps backwards. Accelerate to a stop, accelerate to a stop, accelerate to a stop. Now the other component is, before we actually get into the false casting end of it is, those of you may have seen the movie A River Runs Through It, and they talk about 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, and he wears a pretty little leather glove and on a four count rhythm and so on. Well, what they're referring to with this 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock situation is if I were in my proper casting stance, the clock would be on my right hand side. It's basically a wedge. This would be your 10 o'clock, this would be your 2 o'clock. All that we're trying to get through your head is that stopping point here at 10, here at 2. This is how the false cast is comprised. This is how the false cast is made up. That stop. There's a little pizza wedge right here. The shorter the fly cast, the shorter the stroke. The longer the fly cast, the longer the stroke. And then we're also going to get into some timing and some other basic things. But what we're going to do now is we're going to get into the absolute basics of it, which is the false cast. And that's what I want to show you now. We're going to talk about the false cast now. This is the single most important fundamental portion of the fly cast. The false cast, if you don't have this right, none of the other stuff that we're going to talk about through the segment is going to work. So you have to have a perfect false cast in order to make the entire cast work well. So when you're going to start out, or we're going to start out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off a little bit of fly line. And this is what's going to be known as kind of your working line or your, your, your managing line. And in a river situation, this is going to just sit down by my feet or it's going to flow in the river. It's going to be right there for us. But this is the line that we're going to work with where we're going to actually gain distance and so on. The other hand, your left hand, is going to be your control hand. This hand is just holding on to that fly line. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get into that stance that we talked about earlier. 
left foot forward a little bit. My right foot just set a little bit back. My thumb is comfortably sitting on top of the cork. Now we're going to begin the false cast. I'm going to just feed out a little bit of line. I'm going to start out with my tip down to the ground like this, my elbow off to my side. Very comfortable and very relaxed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the acceleration to the stop, just like we said on the back or earlier. I'm taking my forearm, I'm accelerating to a stop, and I'm going to just simply allow the line to fall down behind me in the grass. So I'm going to start with my hand down here, elbow down, accelerate to a stop, and allow the line to fall down behind me. Now that is 50% of the false cast. Half of it's done. We're going to make the front cast. I'm going to accelerate to a stop and leave the line fall down in front of me. So you can see that is the full cast. A back cast and a front cast. Important. No rod in this hand now. Accelerate to a stop. Accelerate to a stop. Accelerate to a stop. Accelerate to a stop. This is the combined false cast. This is going back, forward, back, forward. That is the false cast. Then I'm going to lay it down. Now, we have the basics down. Accelerate to a stop, accelerate to a stop. The thing I want to show you is if I break my wrist when I'm making these false casts, I want you to see what happens. These are good false casts. Now, as soon as I break my wrist, Here's what's happening. This is called an open loop. In the air in a fly cast, what's going to happen when I make that back cast is you're going to see the fly line go through the air and it's going to kind of make a candy cane through the air. I'll kind of show you here. It kind of just unrolls behind me and it unrolls in front of me. It unrolls. Now, what I want to do before I come forward on that false cast, I'm going to accelerate to a stop. I'm going to wait for that fly line to unfold before I come forward. And the same thing holds true on the front cast. When my fly line unfolds on the front cast, that's when I want to come back. That's referred to as timing. So here's what it looks like. Okay. Now, if I used my wrist in that same motion, here's what's happening. That loop is giant and it has no power and it has no speed. It has absolutely no aerodynamics, and when you're fishing short, you can get away with it. But what will happen is this is going to cripple you down the road when you start to get distance. And when we talk about shooting line later on, when we talk about double hauling, it will cripple you. Look what's happening, and look at how much slower that line is traveling when I'm using my wrist. When I put just the forearm in, here's just the forearm, I get speed, I get control, and eventually I'll gain a lot more distance. That's the basics of the false cast. When you start kind of screwing up and you're having a difficult time with it, take the rod out of your hand, set it down on the ground, and make those motions again. Think about those motions. Accelerate to a stop. Accelerate to a stop. The timing, the line has to unfold. That is the basics of the false cast. And now that we've learned the false cast and you can practice that, then we're going to get into shooting line. What shooting line is going to do for us in the next sequence is it's going to gain more distance. Once you have this technique down, the false casting, you can now go out and fish. You can present your fly to a fish. But what if that fish is further away from you than 10 feet or 15 feet? How do you get distance? Well, as a beginner, people sometimes try to get distance through power. They simply will make the false cast like this, and then they'll just horse it out there and try to get distance. Doesn't work like that. We need to be smooth. We need to make very nice false casts like this. And then we're going to use a technique called shooting line. And shooting line will be the next component that we get into. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the plane of the rod itself. And what I mean by the plane of the rod is when I'm making the cast, does my fly rod need to come straight up over the top of my body like this, straight? Well, that's a Joan Wolf school of casting, and Joan Wolf is a tremendously, tremendously good fly casting instructor. And her complete theory in casting is that the rod is traveling on an arc straight over the top of your head, just like this, a straight plane over the top of your head. Then another gentleman by the name of Lefty Cray has another theory in fly casting. And what Lefty had said 
is that it doesn't matter where your rod is, if it's up here or if it's down here, as long as the tip of the rod is traveling on a straight plane. Meaning that you're kind of drawing a line in a straight line with the tip of the rod, either here or, as Joan Wolf said, here. The most important part is that you're drawing a straight line with the tip. And what I mean by that is I don't want to see these little S turns in your fly cast like this. Some people will start casting and they'll start doing this. You know, or you bring in the rod around like this. No, you can cast off to that little 45 degree angle, but that rod has to be drawing a straight line, creating a straight plane. That's the most important part of, uh, of, of where's the direction of your fly line actually going to head. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into shooting line. Let's get some distance. Now we're going to gain some distance in your fly cast. Shooting line. First, we want to make sure that you have the false cast down adequately because that's going to determine how much line you're going to be able to shoot. What shooting line is going to allow me to do is gain that extra 10, 20, 30, 40 feet to my false cast itself. And how shooting line works is we're going to still make those good, hard, false stops, boom, 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 but when I make that front cast and my rod accelerates to a stop on the front cast, I'm going to allow a little bit of line to slip through my index finger and my thumb. Now I'll let you kind of take a peek at that. I'll make a false cast and on each cast when I stop my rod abruptly forward I'm going to let a little slip through. Little slip through, little slip through. And that added maybe another 10-20 feet to my cast by just allowing a little to slip through. The important part of that is that you only can allow that line to slip through when your rod accelerates to a stop. When your rod stops abruptly here, that's when you let the line slip through. If you don't, you'll be making false casts like this, and if you try to let it go here, it's all gonna fall apart on you. So you just make those false casts, you stop abruptly, and let that little bit of line slip through on that front cast. Now the second way, which is my preferred way of shooting line, is I'm going to create a donut or an O with my thumb and index finger on this cast. What I will do is I'm going to make my false casts just like I was before and when it's time to shoot the line, what I'm going to do is with my thumb and index finger, I'm going to make that little donut just like that and allow that line to slip through. I'll do it again for you so you can take a look at that. Just like this. Okay, now it's time to shoot the line. Stop. The line slips through and I just gain that extra distance that I need. Now the thing that's very important here is when you do make that front cast, the stop, allow the line to shoot out and then bring the rod tip down. A, a very fundamental mistake that a lot of you are going to make in your fly cast is when you're making that front cast like this and it's time to deliver the fly to the fish, you're going to go like this you're not going to make that stop. You're going to just walk right through it. You don't want to do that. You want to stop the rod and bring the tip down. And that's how you would present that actually to the fish. But I will show you a little longer cast now. And this is what can be obtained with shooting line. So from only being able to cast maybe 20 or 30 feet here, now what I can do with shooting line is I just got 50 or 60 feet out with very little effort at all. You can see the casting stroke was very smooth and the line just took off. That's shooting line. Here we are in the river setting itself and uh, we, we showed you in the meadow how to make the cast and the false cast and presenting the fly and so on. But in a river situation a lot of things change. You don't have a big open meadow to do all your practicing. You know a lot of times you have obstructions behind you like I have here where it may be difficult to make back casts and so on. But uh, the first thing that I'm going to do before I get into some of the other little specialty casts is when you are actually presenting the fly to the fish, what's very important is that you don't make these casts and splash them down hard into the water like this. That's going to alarm and alert the trout and you're not going to catch any fish. So the thing to keep in mind is when you are making those false casts and I'm accelerating to that stop, I'm going to stop the rod and allow the fly to just gently come down to the river. I'll try it again. 
just like that. I'm stopping the rod and allowing the fly to come down. Stopping the rod, line coming down. That's critical to your success for spooky, spooky fish. Now, the other situation that you guys can see here is I'm having a difficult time making a back cast. Before in that nice big meadow, we were able to make these big, beautiful, long casts and without any obstructions. But this right here, this is real life. This is what we run into every single day on the river. Those of you who may fish the north woods of Wisconsin, piled with trees everywhere, you don't have the luxury of making those nice false casts all the time. So I'm going to teach you a cast that's very important called the roll cast. And the roll cast, the reason I show it here instead of in the field, is the roll cast uses water uh, tension to help make the cast work. And what the roll cast is designed for is this situation. I'm standing here up against all of this stuff. I can't make a good clean back cast. So what I'm going to do with the roll cast is I'm going to have a little bit of line out. Let me get started here. I'm going to have a little bit of line out. I'm going to hold that line tight in my left hand and I'm going to lift the tip up slowly and smoothly just like this until my line stops. Now you can see it's a two-part cast. The line is kind of bellied behind me, behind my ear like this. Then all that I'm going to do is I'm going to accelerate hard to a stop on a front cast. So it's basically a smooth stroke backwards to a stop and accelerate hard forward. And that's going to allow me to deliver the fly without the back cast. Will you use this cast? All the time. And a lot of those small streams where you can only pick your way down the river because it's lined with trees, this is a perfect situation for sneaking up, making the cast to the fish, maybe take a step or two downstream, slow and smooth, accelerate hard to a stop. The angle that we have here is really quite nice to show that roll cast too, so you can see how it actually rolls out. That's what the name is all about. The line rolls back out. Do it one more time so you can take a look at it. All right, the other cast that I'm going to quick touch on is something that's called a steeple cast. And what the steeple cast is for is I have this high bank here and I say a real tall grass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just lift the rod up high. See how I bring my arm up and bring the cast back down. Arm up, cast down. This will allow you to get up and over obstructions. So instead of just shooting the line right behind your shoulder, I'm kind of shooting it up into the air and back down. Up into the air and back down. And that will allow you to present that fly to the fish as well. Now, the casting, as I had said earlier, is the single most comp important component of catching fish. We can show you what flies to use. We can't make the cast for you. So it is absolutely mandatory that you guys get out there, learn as much as you can. I would highly recommend getting in touch with a qualified casting instructor who can help you out and take you to the next level and keep your education going, keep learning, take classes, go out with a guide, do as much as you possibly can to, to better yourself as a fly caster. That is my key to you and we'll see you on the river.